What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So in a previous video, I tested out the Neptune 3 Plus and today I am super excited to try out this Neptune 3 Max, which is just massive and just so much bigger than the Plus and the Pro both together. I mean, this comes in at 420 by 500 millimeters, so that's roughly 16 and a half inches by almost 20 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this opened up. Let's see what's inside and let's check this out. All right, so here's all the pieces that it comes with all laid out. As you can see, this bed is just massive. This is huge. It does come with the user manual. It comes with the filament holder. It comes with all the tools you're going to need, including the runout sensor, a little roll of filament, little SD card and some nozzles, the cord to hook it up to your computer if you wanna do it that way. It comes with a little glue stick. Now I've never really needed to use this, but if you do, it is there. It does come with the screen that's detachable and magnetic, along with the screen holder to hook that up, the tie bars and the power cord. Now I'll get this all set up, which usually doesn't take very long, it's usually about 15 minutes. It's just a matter of a few screws on each side, installing the magnetic screen and holder, the spool holder, the runout sensor, and then basically just plugging in all the cords. So I'll go ahead, I'll do all that. We'll get that all set up and done, and we'll be back right after that. All right, so I got this all put together, which only took me about, again, 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most. Just like the other ones, it was just a matter of the two screws on each side, hooking up all the cords and everything, attaching the filament holder, the runout sensor, the screen and the screen holder, and that was pretty much it. Oh, and the tie bars that go on the back to give it a little bit more support. Now I did need to remove these little feet right here that kind of hook onto the wheels underneath. So during packaging, it didn't move around. So I'll go ahead and get this turned on, which is just in the back right, flip the switch. And as you can see right here that it's booting up. Now I will run their test file again using their tiny little roll of PLA that they provide. And then after that, I will print something that is much bigger, which might take some time. It might even take a day or two. So keep that in mind that some of these prints take a while. So I did get this all powered on. Now I'm not gonna go through and show you all the leveling because I already did all that. So I'm not gonna do that again. And it is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is Click on the level, use one of these pieces of paper. You need to level all the little knobs underneath and there are six of them, just like on the plus. And then it will go through its 63 point leveling system. Now on the pro and the plus, I think the pro had 36, the plus has 43, I believe, or 49, and this one has 63. So it does take a minute to get this to level for it to go through each point. So I'll go ahead and I'll load this filament. And all I need to do is go into prepare. I can go into extruder and I can go into load. And now this will take a minute for it to heat up. And then once that's done, I'll be able to load that in. So that's all heated up. Now I can take this roll, hook it around feed it right on through, put it in, and then just click on load. And that will feed it right into the bottom. So I can remove the little excess amount. And now I can go back. I can go ahead and click on print. I did already load the little micro SD card in. I can click on the Buddha and click confirm. 
Now the bed will still need to heat up because that hasn't heated up yet. So once that starts, the print will start. And just like on the plus, you can see on the screen what it is you're printing. All right, so this little Buddha has finished. And as you can see, this did take an hour and 14 minutes. Now this is a few minutes more just because it took a few minutes just to heat up the bed. Now you can see this isn't centered and I'm guessing that's because the file that they had already on the micro SD card was probably for either the pro or the plus because if you kind of cut this in half that's probably more centered for the plus and since this is bigger they probably didn't modify it so I'm assuming that's why it's kind of over to the left and to the front a little bit. But let's take a look, see if I can get this off. I'll peel the rest of that off in a minute. But I think that came out good. Nice smooth surface. And I think that came out great. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to print something much bigger and this is probably going to take some time. So I'll get this all set up and we'll be back right after that. All right, so I said I would print something much bigger, and that's what I did. I modeled up my head, and I printed this. Now, this took almost four days to print total, and it used almost an entire roll of filament. Now, I wasn't really planning on making it this big. That just kind of happened, and when I sliced it up in Cura, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's big. That'll take a while, and it's much bigger than I thought it would be, but that's okay. But let's take a look at this. I did have the supports all in the back and it kind of got a little wonky. And the reason for that is because the cord in the back, when it was moving forward, it started hitting the back of the supports. And so I kind of had to use a cable tie just to keep it out of the way from hitting it. But if you look at it, I think it came out great. There aren't really any strings laying around anywhere. I mean, other than what broke off but I think it came out absolutely fantastic. I think my modeling skills are pretty good. But yeah, I'll go ahead, I'm gonna get all these supports off, we'll take a better look at this, and then we'll go over the printer and go from there. So I got all the supports taken off, and as you can see, it pretty much came off really easily, all in one piece. So I'm pretty happy with that, it didn't really screw up the model at all. And here you can see a, a size comparison from the little Buddha I made to my head. Now I'll flip the camera over and I'll put it on and wear it so you can kind of see how this looks and how big this actually is. But overall, I think that came out fantastic. And as you can see, you're able to print absolutely massive pieces on this printer. I mean, I didn't even push it all the way to its capacity. But this was huge, I mean, by itself, almost four days. So when you're talking anything bigger, you might be looking at six, seven days to print something at the full size of this printer. So also before I printed out this big one, I did do a little test one just to see how it was gonna come out and how it was gonna look. And I think that came out great. But that was just a test just to see, and this only took about, I don't know, half an hour to print, not very long at all. So I'll go over some of the things I really like about this and overall I think it's pretty much everything. Just like the Pro and the Plus, I think this machine works fantastic. Everything about it is really well designed and it works really, really well. This one does have the 63 point leveling system instead of the 16 or 32 or 43 or, or whatnot on the previous models, but it is much bigger. so it actually levels every little individual part. Now, it does have the knobs underneath like the previous ones, which isn't really a big deal. Yes, you do have to manually adjust it the first time, but after that, 
you really shouldn't have to and it should be all set up to go once it does its automatic leveling. I do like that it has a nice little drawer right here to keep all the tools and maybe the extra nozzles or, or things that you're going to need and that keeps it really handy inside of the machine so you don't lose them. The touch screen works perfectly just as it does on the previous models. It's very simple to connect to. It's just a connector right here. The little micro SD card goes right here and as usual you have to put it in upside down. This was very well packaged and it was very easy to put together. It only took me about 15 minutes or so. Just a few screws on each side, plugging in all the cables, attaching the filament holder, attaching the screen holder, and the tie bars that go in the back to give it a little bit more support. And that's pretty much it. Just like the previous models as well, it does have the LED light bar that runs underneath the top. And this is also a very quiet machine. When you turn this on, there's literally no noise at all really whatsoever. As you can see, I'll turn this on. It'll boot up, which takes a minute, not very long, maybe 10 seconds or so. But once it does, you'll hear that nothing is actually running, no fans, until you actually start heating up the bed and the nozzle. So as you can see now, it's booted up. Now the screen is very responsive. It's very easy to use. You can go into settings, adjust the language, temperature settings, fan control, the LED light as well if you want to. Preparing everything is simple. Setting the temperature, swapping out the extruder and the filament. And leveling it is very simple too. You just click on level and follow the instructions that it says. This machine, just like the others, does have the dual lead screws in the back, which just make it so it's just a little bit more precise while you're printing. So I think overall this is a fantastic machine. I really don't have anything negative to say about this. It prints, I think, perfectly just how it's supposed to. Once you get this leveled correctly, I think this is more or less flawless. There are a few things that could be adjusted, just like the filament runout sensor, I think could just be fixed a little bit. But I think that's probably be about it, other than, again, the micro SD card not having to turn it upside down, which I'm used to it, so it's really not that big of a deal, but something that I'm always just going to keep pointing out every time somebody puts it upside down in one of these machines. So this does come in at a price point around $470. Now it's a little bit more expensive, but considering the size and build volume you're getting, I think to me that is 100% worth it. For like the Plus or the Pro, it's $100 $200 difference in price but I think it's absolutely worth it to get the biggest one just because you never know what you're going to need to print. And if you're like me and like to just make goofy stuff and kind of push it to its limits, you can. So if you guys have any questions about this machine, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know. Or if there's something you want to see me print, also, again, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But that's going to be it for this video, everyone. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.